What's up, everybody? Abra L. Uh, Vinu here with Fully Deconverted, and today we have In Harris, the skeptic comedian, on our show. In is a clever, cutting edge comedian, and his act has landed him uh, appearances on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Comedy Central, as well as two hour TV specials. But I'll let him go in a little bit more on his extensive accomplishments here in just a second. If you're new to Fully Deconverted, uh, you can head over to fullydeconverted.com. Check us out. we got some articles there. We have like a little book library. We'll be publishing a members page soon so people can have interaction on our site. And, uh, and we also got this thing going on right now. We are promoting a series with Richard Carrier. So if you head over to fullydeconverted.com slash Richard Carrier, you're going to see that we're crowdfunding a series. We're raising $4,000, and right now we're about $1,000 into it with about three more weeks to go, so we're doing great. And if you want to earn your name into the credits of that new series, uh, go ahead and go over there to fully de uh, fullydeconverted.com slash Richard Carrier and see how you can do that. We would appreciate any financial support there, and we can't wait to film it and, uh, and, and see you in our credits. So... With that said, and if you want to reference anything that we've done in the past, uh, you can just look up our stuff with R and Raw on our same website, and it'll be something like that. But uh, you know, it gets better in time, right? Hey, in over to you, my friend. Uh, introduce yourself a little bit. Well, hey, thanks. Um, so yeah, so I'm Ian. I'm a, I'm just a, uh, just a comedian, <laughs> and um, you know, just happen to be a, a comedian who dabbles in. Or who 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 bases his comedy and skepticism and atheism? So yeah, um, yeah. So that's and that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm also a, a mixed martial artist. I I, I train fighters um, and own a gym in Los Angeles. Um, but oh. that's more of my hobby that takes up all my time. <laughs> you you know what? Now that you say that, you look exactly like a like a fighter. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> look at that. You got the shaved head. You need to make sure nobody pulls your hair. I got this. You know, I got I got all this that I just throw around all the time. Is yeah. Yeah. So how long have you been doing the martial arts, man? Uh, well, I've been doing something in the martial arts since I was six years old. Like I started boxing when I was six and then I, yeah. I wrestled and I did traditional martial arts, you know, um, then I did Muay Thai, then I've done jujitsu for 21 years. So I've been doing it for a long time. Ian, can you kick my ass? <laughs> I wouldn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, like, are you like sizing me up right now? Are you one of those persons who's sizing me up? Like, yeah, I can do this right there. I'll, I'll have them. You know what's funny is, um, ever since I've been training for so long, I never get in fights. Uh -huh. And um, I'll tell you what, though, like, the, I, I, maybe it's a confidence thing because I don't like people don't people don't scare me at all. Like, I mean, I, I know yeah. that. I mean, I've, I've had people come in who are you know huge, crazy, big, tough psycho people who look who say i've got ten thousand street fights and you know and i'm old and 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 injured all the time and i'm like you know <laughs> they, they can't last they can't last three seconds with like my 115 pound female fighter you know what i mean so yeah. i'm like I, people don't they, they don't like just doesn't uh they don't intimidate me they don't it doesn't bother me like ever anymore so it's um yeah it's weird it's an interesting thing because i'm not a big guy I'm, i mean i'm like you know i mean i'm not small i'm average i'm like 5 11 170 you know and yeah. um yeah but i don't it's weird because I, I just don't i don't ever think in those terms except for unless you really piss me off then i'm like think to myself I, it would take seconds um <laughs> but but no it's it's funny like i just i just don't and i'm not an aggressive person like i don't i yeah. never get never got in fights growing up or any of that kind of stuff i just like training and i love the combat arts you know yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that. So I did martial arts for seven years, man. Just as a teenager, uh, I think until I was 17, 18 years old, and um, yeah, I mean, I was I was passionate about it. Like I loved it, and right. um, so my kind of thought was: now I would still get intimidated by people because um, I was like a teenager. You know, I wasn't an adult, right? Right. Uh, but I felt like I could very quickly, um, kind of intuitively, pick up on how people carry themselves. Um, and, you know, kind of what they would do given, you know, the, their body shape, how they right. move and you kind of pick up on some style if they were, if they were going to do something to you. So you kind of size people up that way. And yeah, my confidence was super high, even though I was like still afraid sometimes. Right. And, um, so I'm just wondering that about you right now. Like, do you feel like your, your intuition, and this is like all sidebar right now, do right. you feel like your intuition about 
how the human body works and how people carry themselves in their own body and psychologically having having dealt with people in your area of expertise for so long is that what gives you your confidence yeah i mean i i think so i mean i think it's also just that you know for years i thought i knew martial arts and then i started you know training brazilian jiu-jitsu and you know where you go a lot harder and then started training mma fighters and working with pro mma, MMA fighters and seeing how good they are and at what level they're at and knowing that I can hang with those guys in the gym or beat those guys in the gym and they're world-class fighters. And I, and, and seeing people come in off the streets and that sort of stuff and, and, and training with them. And I realize how little the general public knows. Right, yeah. um, and, and when somebody comes in, it's like, I mean, you know, who's, who's new to it there, you can toy with them. If you, if you really know what you're doing, it's really just an applied yeah. skill. It's a science, you know I mean? I call my gym fight science cause I'm a science geek, but, um, it's an applied science really. And, and, you know, just like anything else, if you were, if you were a mathematician, if you were some genius math guy, you, you wouldn't, you would never, a math problem, an, an algebra problem wouldn't even phase you. You'd be like, Oh, it's algebra. What's the big deal? You yeah. know? <laughs> and, yeah. and I feel, I think it's the same kind of thing where it's like, well, yeah, I'm sure if, you know, if I'm blindsided by, a guy with a beer bottle in a bar. Well, yeah, I mean, it, that's going to, that's going to take anybody out. But yeah. um, first off, I'm not going to live my life worried about crazy stuff like that. But, but it's, um, yeah. And you can tell like I, it, when somebody trains too, which is weird. Like um, I have, I've had it recently. A few people come to me and say, Hey, do you do martial arts or do you train or something? Yeah. And I go, yeah. How do you know that? Cause I don't have cauliflower ear or anything like that. And they go, just kind of the way you carry yourself, you know? Yeah. I guess, I guess so. I mean, I guess they, they can pick it out. Cause I usually can see somebody and kind of go, Hey, wh so what do you do? And they'll be like, Oh, I box or oh, I do jujitsu or oh, I wrestle. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can, I can tell just the way they carry themselves. And I, I think there is, um, definitely a, a confidence. Sometimes it's false confidence though. I bet. I, I, I mean, even with me, I don't, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that could just destroy me in a few minutes if it came down to it. But, um, you know, I think sometimes people, they've got a year or two of training and they, they've got this false bravado that they're, um, oh, right, badasses, right, right. Yeah. you know, but I think they'd probably be into it for the wrong reason. They're probably doing it to be right. a badass. I'm doing it because I enjoy doing it and I like the skill Absolutely. of it, and I, you know, and I think that's a little different because I've, I've met those people that are like, you know, I've been doing, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm trained, you know, I've been, you know, I've met yeah. a lot of milita military guys that are like, I'm a Marine and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> calm down, buddy. Uh, so. Yeah, absolutely. The people that are passionate about it and, and you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's uh, that will definitely drive people a lot further than those with that false bravado that you spoke of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Ian, um, humans believe some outlandish things. Why is it important <laughs> for us to make fun of ourselves? You know, first off, I'm glad you said you make, make fun of ourselves because um, I always get told that I – that I'm making fun of other people, which of course I am. That's my job. Um, but it's a collective, right? We're, we're right. making fun of ourselves. Everybody has something dumb they believe. I mean, uh, I'm sure if you went and, you know, looked, found Neil Tyson or, or Stephen Hawking or any of these, you know, brilliant scientists who, you know, and I'm sure that there are atheists and, and skeptics and, you know, and all of that, I bet you, you can find something that they did or at one point or still do believe that's, that's kind of nonsense or that's maybe not totally based in reality. Um, yeah. And we have to check ourselves because we have to, um, we have to care about the, the, the factualness, the, the fact, I don't know, the, uh, the, the, <laughs> how fact-based our belief system is. We yeah. have to care about that. We have to care about facts. Facts are, um, I mean, it, for, for, for knowing that the, the, what's, what's real in the world are the, the one thing that we have to know, we have to be able to rely on facts and we have to be able to discern something about those facts through a logical process of critical thinking or, or whatever. If we want to further ourselves as a species, further ourselves as individuals and um, pretending to know something when, when you don't actually have any knowledge is yeah. is a horrible it's a horrible way to live your life i know it feels comforting and that, and that's cool to people but it's it's really true for those of you who are out there that are religious uh, that are like oh but i know and i feel like i know and it, it makes me comfortable to believe this thing it, it's really it's scary to let that go i'm sure um but it's also a lot more comforting 
after you get to the other side to go, oh, it's better to know or to not know and have be on the path to trying to find out these answers. It's actually, it's actually for me, it's much more comforting um, and, and, and much more interesting. Like I'm always trying to find out more, more stuff I don't know. And I'm hope, yeah. I hope I'm wrong a lot so that I can be right after I've been proven wrong. Now I'm right again. I love that. <laughs> yeah. But in some of these experiences, like oh, we go from like believing these things and we all know what religious things we believe. Right. And, uh, and, and, you know, some of these things could actually cause us or our lives uh, a mm -hmm. good amount of misfortune. And with you being a comedian and kind of breaching some of these subjects, how careful do you find that you have to be sometimes to be able to deliver the comedic element of it all um, while still kind of making sure that it's funny. I guess that was implied in, in my right. saying so, but also not overstepping any bounds or, you know, how some comedians got to be like a little touchy. No, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm not a comedian, so I'm kind of just going on at this point, but. No, um, I, I get what you're saying. I think, I think um, it, it's a fine line um, because you don't want to get preachy. Yeah. You don't want to piss off the crowd. Um, although there are comics out there that they do want to piss off the crowd. Um, yeah. I'm, I am not, I never shy away from doing controversial material. I never shy away from pissing somebody off, but I never set out to piss somebody off or to turn away the crowd or walk the audience as, as we call it as a comic. Um, I, I, I don't try to do that, but um, I also don't necessarily believe in tailoring what I do. Um, and, and I think, I think if you're thinking rationally and, and if I can get you to come along the journey with me, you will find stuff that you, even that you believe funny. Now, some mm -hmm. things are so, so ingrained in our psyche and ingrained in our self mm -hmm. that a lot of people have a hard time letting go of those things. So, and finding them funny. Um, and there's always going to be that. There's always going to be people who, who are upset with something. But one of the things I like to do, why I don't, you know, people used to go, oh, you're the atheist comic. You do all these atheist conventions and all these atheist things and you talk about God. But I'm like, I try to be a skeptic, a skeptical comic and, and science-based. And I try to be a, this logic, you know, logical yeah. comedy. And, and my goal is to <clears throat> talk about a lot of things, um, you know, talk about everything from the silly, the stuff that, you know, that we might see as silly, really silly, like Bigfoot. But there are pe people out there that, that don't find Bigfoot silly, that, that actually are out hunting for Bigfoot. And there's people who, who believe in ghosts. Yeah. You know, and there's people who believe in astrology and there's people who, who kind of believe in astrology, but it's just fun for them. But they still go, oh, you're a Virgo. Um, and then there's people that believe in religion and, and and there are people that are fuzzy about religion. Well, it makes you feel good, but, you know, I don't care. You believe what you believe. I just believe in a higher power. And then there's other people that are like, I am Christian. And if you're not Christian, you should die or hang by a, hang from a tree or, or whatever it is. They their psychoness, psycho. Uh, brain is telling them that how you have to be like me or, or Muslim or, or whatever religion that they're super vehement about. Um, and that's dangerous. So, for, so for me, it's like, I want to be up on stage and saying, you know, Hey, look at this. This is funny. This is silly. This Bigfoot thing. And then have you go, Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty silly. Those guys are crazy. And then I use that same formula to go and, and astrology, look at this. And they go, Oh yeah, that's crazy. And I go, Oh, and, and, and your gluten allergy might not be scientific either. And they go, Oh, oh yeah. You know, the liberals. Oh yeah. Oh, well, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Um, and then I go, Oh, climate change. Uh, that's real. And the, you know, the people who, who are in the audience who might've been laughing at what they've considered the liberals in astrology or yeah. some gluten thing that I said, I may have made a joke about organic food and the people who are kind of right wing in the audience may thought I was on their side, maybe like, Oh yeah, he, yeah. Get stick it to the liberals. <laughs> and then I turn around and go and Christianity's bullshit. And, uh, also, <laughs> you know, uh, your, your anti, uh, sci climate change is bullshit. And, um, the fact that you don't believe in evolution is bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. BS. I don't know. I'm sorry. No, it's it's all good. Okay, cool. Um, and I, uh, and then I think what happens is people start going, oh, wait, I was just laughing at this thing. Mm. 
because he set it up in such a way and pointed out why it's why it doesn't make any sense and there's no science behind it and i thought that was funny and then he did it again and i thought it was funny and all of a sudden now he's doing the exact same thing about something i believe in and everyone else is laughing and i'm not laughing and i think that sometimes clicks in people and they go oh wait all these things are kind of the same hmm. and not everyone i mean a lot of people still go well those are those things are funny but this isn't um but i get a lot of people come up to me afterward and go yeah, you had me thinking because I was laughing at everything. And then you got to something I believe in. And I had to go, oh, wait a second. Is this also nonsense? Yeah. Um, are you wrong? Am I wrong? Are neither one of us wrong? Like, um, and, and I get that a lot. And I, and I find that, that um, if I do it right, if I play the crowd right, then they come along the journey with me. And, you know, like I said, if, it, if, it's, a, if it's a super conservative crowd, I, I start out with, you know, with uh, – um, things that they might be on board with. And then I try to bring them along to where right. I want to get at the end, you know? So I have a, like a basic question. I've never thought too much about this and hopefully you have what, why do humans laugh? Um, how do we explain like the mechanism by which we have a sense of humor and, and why does it exist? Like what, why do we laugh? And, and how do, how do you know the formula that will, that will make somebody Laugh. I know this all seems intuitive. Right. But have you ever thought about the science behind that? Yeah, you know, I, I have, but I have not researched it. I was literally yeah. this weekend talking to somebody. I was at Dragon Con um, in Atlanta, these huge, you know, it's a huge con. And I was on Skep Track and, and it's, um, it's really, really fun. But I was talking to somebody um, in, the, in the skeptic community, the science community, who, who was saying about, uh, who was saying that they were looking to do some sort of research on what what maybe the evolutionary uh benefit to laughing was there has right. to be something there has to be a reason that that and why do i say this thing why is ha ha ha, ha, ha. why is that the response you know when you when you cry like like when you cry and tears come out and you give that like the why why does our body do respond that way to that sort of emotional um uh, trigger I'm not sure. Um, I do know that that it, that that for sure. If I can, if I can take some t what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing as a comedian. As far as how I'm trying to make your brain work, is I'm taking your logical processes and I'm flipping them upside down, or I'm or I'm taking you in a direction that you think I'm going, and then when I come back the other direction and, and bait and switch you, your brain goes, "Oh, okay, I got that." And it's a you're you're recognizing the irony or the or the or the uh, contradiction or the sarcasm or whatever. Um, and that's just a formula. That's just a way of figuring out, okay, if I take them this way, can I surprise them enough to make them go, Oh man, that was good. And yeah. usually that responds in laughter because we're, 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 we're finding something in our, in our, our own inconsistencies or inconsistency in the world. Um, but yeah, the reason that we actually have that response and, and that we respond the way we do, I, I don't know, but I'm very interested in <laughs> Yeah, I'm very interested in too. Like, how, how do we get to the point where we're like, uh, 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 and like we yeah. all have different kinds of laughs and, you know, everything like that. I guess that's social conditioning for the different kinds of laughs. But, um, yeah, just, I don't know. Like, I was thinking about it today, knowing that I was going to come on the interview with you. And I'm like, who were the first humans that were surprised by something or, or found something in the environment that was just a bit unexpected? And they were right. like, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it like starts signaling to like other humans around them and like maybe they're like pointing and now I'm starting to think about a, like old caveman commercials or something where they do right. that and everybody jumps and starts swooping and hollering and all that sort of stuff. I know that is interesting. I don't know if we can know that, but I suppose maybe we could. No, I mean, it's, it's also similar to, you know, um, I've heard other, I've heard, I think Richard Dawkins and a few other people talk about um, what is the evolutionary benefit to religiosity there yeah. must be some um to tribalism i would say to like you know i mean obviously there's some benefits that we can obviously to tribal see to tribalism like okay these these people look like me and and act like me so therefore i'm probably safer with them and i shouldn't go out because these people might want to kill me or if i stray from this group there might be animals that'll kill me or whatever the deal is that keeps me in that community um and groupthink is part of that. You don't want to be outcast by not being part of the group. Yeah. But there's also got to be something that makes us want to believe in magic, which yeah. 
so many people want to believe in magic. Like even, even when people shed their religion, they get religious about something else. They get religious about their politics. They get their religious about their food they eat, or they get they st and and they stop thinking critically, and and they all, and they start acting off confirmation bias mm -hmm. every every turn they can on some. Even though there's are skeptical or fairly rational thinkers or people who've shed some other form of of nonsense in their in their lives, all of a sudden they've they've just they've just transferred it to something else. And sometimes it's just as hard to get them to see that they've done that. And, and, and that's, it's all kind of magical thinking and, and, and there, there must be some sort of benefit or, 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 or um, something to, to why we have that trait or why so many people have that trait, you know? Is that, is, is that why Aaron raw always wears black? <laughs> or, or maybe that's why Seth Andrews bought that really nice microphone. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or, or um or maybe that's why thomas westbrook secretly really wants to be a cartoon <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm thinking of people that identify something right. like what you just said like there's yeah. something about them that definitely identifies them as a character <laughs> yeah it's 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 and i think it's weird i think on some level we just and it's on some level every single person even if you're aware of it, which I am, and I still know that I do this all the time, but everybody wants to be special. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to have something different than, than some, somebody else. I mean, we say it, we say it all the time. We're all special. Everyone's special. Is that even true? It, I, I, I think that isn't true. I think it sounds good to say, oh, we're all special, but if we're all special, then nobody's special. That's just kind yeah. of how it works. You can't, it can't be both. Either, right. either we're, we're all completely individual or all completely the same, or it's somewhere in between. But, um, you know, I mean, every birth is in a miracle. There's billions of us on the planet. So it's like, it, um, but I think it makes us feel good. I mean, um, nobody wants to admit that they're not different or, 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 you know, everybody wants to be better at somebody than something else, uh, than, than, than someone else, you know, or at something than someone else. Um, and whether that means that you have psychic abilities or you can, you know, you have a special relationship with a power that's, that's, greater than the than you or you you know you can tell something by looking at their astrological sign or or read their palm or or you know um i have more friends than you or you have less you know or, or look at the food i ate on instagram today and, and tell me how cool i am for making this food like we all want to be hmm. special yeah man so my mind is kind of racing right now as you say that i'm just like um you know yeah, there are those who sincerely believe in God and then take it, take up the ministry and, and go to the pulpits or the stages and try to inform, you know, the congregations of this good thing. But now I'm just thinking, you know, are, are they trying to be their own characters, too? Right. And I'm like, why do I have to think so hard about that? I mean, you got people <laughs> like Benny Hinn and like the I mean, these outrageous characters that, yes, certainly they, they took it to that level of right. kind of extreme character characterization and you know polarization of what that personality type is and they got that part of the culture down pretty heavy like it's, it's right unless you can think of a way to really become like a millionaire preaching <laughs> the word some other way I, I don't know how you do that without uh, what are their tactics I, I don't know sensationalism I don't know I haven't thought right. too much about that but anyways yeah there's some characters so speaking of characters have you ever seen Watchmen I have not. You have not. All right, cool. No, Fine. No. Doesn't make a difference it. in the conversation. I'm still going to ask you this next question anyways. Okay. Um, what can satire or parody teach us about ourselves? And um, I think parody is when we make fun of something and like everybody laughs. Satire is like when you make fun of something and everybody feels bad about it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. You know, right. but you're making fun of it somehow. Um, it's kind of like what comedians do, I imagine, on stage. You know, you're either making a parody of something or hysterical in some way and just trying to piss people off. I don't know. But what can that teach us about ourselves? I mean, I, I think I think that's probably one of the best ways for self-reflection. Um, however, these days, I mean, I'm, I've been saying this for several years, and now, I mean, I'm not that I invented this, this thought, but now you see a lot of people saying the same thing that I started saying a long time ago is actually a joke I wrote years ago was that it's funny that satire now and reality as far as news and <clears throat> what we see on the internet 
it's hard to tell. I, I really mm. sometimes can't tell the difference between the onion and Fox news. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. You look at the headline and especially if you just read the headline, you, you, you go, is this, is a satire? Yeah. Um, especially in the world of Trump right now, he says stuff and you go, you have to fact check everything because you go, there's no way. I mean, today I, I read that he, that he called, the Trump called Jeff Sessions uh, a mental retard or something like that. And I was like, that can't be real. <laughs> like, even Trump, that can't be real. <laughs> and sure enough, it was real. And I'm like, I was like, that has to be some sort of paraphrasing or, or they're being hyperbolic. I, I, I don't know, but I'm like, how he couldn't have said those words. And, and from what I found, he said those words. And I'm like, if you had put that on the onion, you know, president calls the, you know, attorney general a retard. And yeah. then they wrote some, some, some satirical thing about it. You'd be like, Oh, this is hilarious. This would never happen in reality. Yeah. Um, and, but I think th that being said, you, we still find ways to parody and, and for satire because it, it allows us to look at ourselves and hopefully say, Oh, wow. Do I look that ridiculous? Do I sound that ridiculous? Mm -hmm. Is, is, is this really, um, how people see me. Um, and uh, the, the, the downside though is right now is that we, the, you know, the only spot I would say where, where the, the right has any correctness is uh, we do get a little too sensitive over here on the left to where I've seen parodies where people say, oh, you can't, you can't say those words or you can't do those things or you can't do this because it's insensitive. And it's like, no, no, the character is a parody of an insensitive guy. So right, if right. we don't make this guy an ass, you know, or a jerk or, or a, a, a racist or whatever the character is, we can't make fun of him. And right. making fun of these people is what allows us to know that they're ridiculous. If I'm playing a ridiculous, <laughs> you know, Nazi character in an in a SNL sketch and, and that ridiculous character says ridiculous racist things, we have to be able to do that to go, oh, that's ridiculous. That's right. a bad thing. We have to be able to do that. Um, uh, otherwise, we don't really know what's ridiculous and what's not, not ridiculous. If we can't laugh at it and go, yeah, that, that's an obvious parody, but there are people that are kind of like that. That's why they're idiots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, so what hinders um, the audience's culture of being able to understand that those characters have to be in place in order for us to make fun of that. Uh, and I want to stack on top of there that some comedians are seeing this in a couple of headlines now. So it must be true. Won't any yes. longer perform in uh, like universities and, and this sort of thing. What, what, what's going on there? Why, why, are, why are comedians not able to connect with the crowd when we really want to press the issue on some of these buttons that are a little bit more sensitive than others, what's going on there? Well, I, I mean, I think, you know, our, our nature is, is, as comedians. And, and by the way, the weird thing about that is most of these comedians that have said they don't want to perform in front for colleges hmm. are liberals yeah, yeah, and yeah. the audiences are liberal. That's right. the weird thing is yeah. that it's liberals saying to other liberals, you can't say those things, which is why the right turns around and goes, liberals are against free speech. No, Liberals are not against free speech. There are people who are liberals. There are people who call themselves liberals, who, who, who espouse the same ideals as, as myself and many other liberals. Like they're all on the same issues. When you talk about marriage equality and, and civil rights, and we all are on the same issue, but our tactics are different. Um, my tactics aren't to shut you up and punch you in the face and blockade the thing. And, you know, to me, that's a conservative ideology. I've had this conversation with many people. Mm. It's conservatism, in my opinion, to shut people up, to be a fascist, to stop you from getting the, your abortion, to stop you from speaking at the college. To me, that's fascism. To me, that's right wing. I don't care if you're saying I'm, I'm shutting you up in the name of liberalism. You're still using Nazi tactics, in my opinion. Um, I'm punching you in the face in the name of liberalism. Sorry, I haven't done anything to you to warrant that. So therefore, you're being the fascist. You are a right-wing person espousing left-wing ideals. Um, and I think the problem is that we've gotten too sensitive about things and people don't, don't look at the context of what's being said. When you have Jerry Seinfeld and Chris Rock uh, you know, um, going, 
and yeah, I can't, I can't perform in, in front of a college anymore because mm. you know, they'll, they'll, they, they tell you what you can and can't say, they'll boo you off the stage. They'll do all these stuff for saying a word without even paying attention to the, to the context of the word. Um, mm. Or, or, or the, the character that's saying it on stage or, or just asking you, hey, could we look at this? Could you be wrong? Could I be wrong? Um, and a lot of comics do that. A lot of comics go up on stage and they say stuff specifically to get you to think, even though they don't agree with it themselves. They're doing something to get you to think about it, to get the conversation going. And hopefully it progresses it in the right in the right era in, in the right direction. Um, you know, Dave Chappelle got a lot of crap for his for some of the stuff he said. But when you look at what he said, you know, um, he he was asking a question. He wasn't making right. a statement. He right, was saying, right. and he was saying, I don't. And he was making a joke. Okay, so yeah, it may be an off color. It may have been bad, but it's, he was saying, look, I don't get this. Um, you know, I used to do a joke about about Muslims, and I and my character was, I'm dumb. I don't know anything about Islam. And then I would make a joke about, I heard this. Well, I'm obviously being silly. But people would come up to me afterward and be like, well, that's not what Islam's about. I'm like, I know. That's why the character said he didn't know what the, it, Islam was about. You know. But it's like, I, if you don't get the context of what I'm saying, if you don't get the subtlety or the parody or the satire of what I'm saying, maybe comedy isn't for you. Or, or, or you know, and if, and if someone is not doing comedy, if they're giving a lecture, you know, if I'm going to go up and give a lecture at a college, um. You may not agree with me. That's okay. Mm. I don't agree with you. So you see, say what you have to say. Let me say what I have to say. And and if you know, and if they have some right wing nut on there, some Milo or Milo or whatever the hell he is, fine. Let the idiot speak. And then next week, bring in somebody you like to speak, or say, hey, we'll bring this guy in, but we'll, we'll do a debate. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, they hear these ideas. I mean, we can't shut them off. If you shut them down. Then we don't hear them and we don't even know what's going, what's out there. And, and, and if we don't know what else is out there, there's, there's going to be a whole steam, a whole bunch of steam built on the other side without us even knowing what their talking points are. And, and that's the way if, if you want to recruit nuts, try to shut them out because first off, they'll, they'll, have, they'll be, they'll be victims. So they'll mm -hmm. get people who go, Oh, the, Oh, these poor victims. And you guys are the bad guys. Number yeah. one. Number two, when they do come to power, when they do get two million followers, we will have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. And they'll blindside us. I'd rather keep my enemies close. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather hear what they're saying. I'd rather combat their ideas. That's me, you know? Well, we've already kind of touched on it, but how does humor open the door to critical analysis? I, I think most humor is based in, in analogy um, mm -hmm. on some level. I mean, not all humor. You know, some 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 comics or or writers or you know whether it's a comedian or a comedic actor, or song parodies or you know you write a you make a cartoon in the newspaper whatever it is you do, um, I, I think I think you are in a sense for the most part holding the mirror up to society, holding the mirror up to yourself, yeah. um, and 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 you're making those analogies. That's that's why they're funny. Hey, th this thing does this. It kind of is like this. And then you go, oh, that's funny. Yeah, that is like that, right? Um, and, and I think that's what allows us, to, again, to reflect and go, oh, wow, am I really being that way? Oh, was I really thinking like that? Uh, or, wow, it's really that serious. Um, while laughing at it, you can laugh and go, yeah, that's, that's, a funny, that's funny, that's funny. But then you also walk away going, and a good point. And that's what a lot of the great comics, the Richard Pryors, the George Carlins, the Doug Stanhopes, there's a lot of really great comics out there that, that make you laugh and make you think. Um, because, and sometimes you just think, sometimes you just, well, you just applaud and go, yeah, that was a great point. Wow. I can't believe I never thought of it like that. And sometimes you laugh your butt off and then you walk away going, oh, huh, I got to think about that. And, and, and um, I mean, I think that's, that's what, that's what comedy is supposed to do. Can you recall a, a bit that made you do that? Like, were you laughing at it, but it made you think as well? Um, oh man, there, there's so many. Um, there's so many bits, uh, like I said, it, it, I mean, you could look at almost anything Doug Stanhope did in the, the early to mid 2000s. Um, George Carlin did so much stuff about, you know, his, his one bit about um, the the American dream. I, I can't do the whole bit, but but this, the the last line is, they call it the American dream because you have to be you have to be asleep to believe it. <laughs> um, and you know, uh, R R Richard Pryor, you know, 
used to did did a joke um, um, for nineteen seventy one maybe, where he's like, you know, I mean, we're talking that's like the year I was born. Okay, we're talking. I'm forty seven years old. Forty seven years ago, I don't know. Seventy forty five years ago, I don't know. A long time ago. Yeah. Um, he did a joke where he said, you know, black people. Well, he didn't say black people, but, but I'm not going to say the other word because I don't want to get in trouble. But he, he, and even though I'm quoting, but he said, he goes, we have to because we get pulled over by the cops. You know, we have to be like, I am reaching in my pocket for my wallet. <laughs> And and we're still dealing with that today. <laughs> yeah. People getting sh I mean, Colin Kaepernick and having to kneel, um, and football players having to kneel because when a when a when a black person is getting pulled over, even when they say, "I am reaching into my wallet, into my pocket for the wallet that you asked me to give you," they yeah. still shoot him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it it's crazy that, they, that that a comedian was talking about that forty some years ago. Yeah, and it's still happening today. And and I mean, on some level, I guess we didn't learn from that. But also, the internet wasn't around back then. Imagine if the internet was around back then, and that was a that clip went viral in 1973. You know, yeah. would it have helped? I don't know. Yeah. It might have. Yeah, I think my time um, for issues like that was Dave Chappelle. Like my growing up, kind of coming about was uh, was when Dave Chappelle was big, and uh, I think it was his opening series. Where he touched on all all the racial issues. I think it was his mm -hmm. opening series. Yeah, and uh, that was hilarious. Like I, I died laughing. Like that okay. whole series and that whole bit and everything. And he did a a, a stand up. I think it was Dave Chappelle killing him softly. Yeah, I yeah. Think it, I think it was his first big special. Yeah, I, I cried during that whole thing. I was laughing That's so hilarious. hard. Like it oh, was amazing. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it, it, it's funny. Like it's talking about you know Richard Pryor used to do it. Is one of his another one of his bits was like he goes you know he goes you gotta um because you know the police the police they gotta they got a uh a hold they just break it one grab you know two grab your head one grab your foot and like oh, we broke him oh is it okay to you know he goes is it, is it okay to break, break a black guy oh yep right here page four it's okay to break him you know and, <laughs> and, and you're just like it's still happening it's crazy to me <laughs> yeah. um but yeah, I mean, there's just, there's, there's, I mean, so many great moments, uh, Chris Rock, you know, um, in, you know, bring the pain was phenomenal, a uh, bigger, bigger and blacker, not my favorite special, but he, that was the one with bullet control, which is a little silly and a little ridiculous, um, and meant to be silly and ridiculous, but yeah. it is funny and it is, it is kind of a good point. Um, I mean, I know if some people are like, come on, that's so, so dumb, but that it's so absurd. But sometimes abs absurdity is funny, and I don't know if you know the bit, but it's like we don't need gun control; we need bullet control. Make every right. bullet cost five thousand dollars. He goes, <laughs> and you'll see a lot of you know, and then uh, you'll see you know, it's like, hey, I'm going to save up, I'm going to get another job, you know, and in five years you're a dead man or whatever, you know, what I mean? whatever the joke is. But, it, but it's like it, it, it's funny, and it's like, yeah, maybe this is maybe that is a different way to look at gun control. You know he put what I mean? fifty thousand dollars worth of bullets in <laughs> his ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> he must have did something. That's what he. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember seeing that too. Yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah, oh, and, but but also but also it it makes sense on some level where you go, hey, well, okay, so guns, sure, fine, then we won't touch the Second Amendment at all. You can have any gun you want, but good luck getting bullets. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, so. Is it important? Is it important to be serious about the meaningful things in life, or should we take it all with a grain of a salt because everything seems so temporary? Like, how serious should we be in life? How Joker esque should we all hmm. be? Well, I think that's an ind individual point, but I, I, or an individual choice. But I think you have to have both. I think you have to have a. I think everyone should should be connected. Um, that's the one thing that really drives me crazy about America specifically is that we are just so many people are just not connected, or they're kind of connected, but they think you know they're, they're you know they're like the voting in America where we have 
you know, when you look at the last election, 50, something like 50% of, of eligible voters didn't vote because their vote didn't matter or, well, that the candidate didn't fit my, my what I wanted 100%. So I'm just going to let the psycho take over because I didn't get exactly what I wanted. Wah, wah, wah. And I'm like, all right, really? You're that disconnected from the from the world that that you can't, you don't realize the serious nature of these things and that we need to at least have a dialogue and, and do what we can to push things the right way uh, for the future and for, you know, so history looks kindly on us and 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 so that our, our kids and our grandkids and our grandkids' grandkids have a place that's decent to live in and we don't repeat the 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 past um, and, and know that, yeah, it's never going to be perfect and people are never going to be perfect. Um, and, and that drives me crazy where it's like there's, so many people aren't serious enough. I mean, they'll be serious, but they're, they're not connected to serious issues and they don't think about things. And I, I talk to people about religion and politics and they go, yeah, I don't really like to think about those things. What? That's life. That's who's controlling you. That, yeah. That's who's, that, that, those are the things you should think about. You're worried about, about what clothes you're wearing or, or what song is popular right now. But it's like, you're not, you don't care about, about, um, issues that affect you and everyone around you and, 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 and your freedoms and your livelihood and, and paying for college and I mean, you, and your healthcare, you don't care about these things. Um, so I think we have to be serious about those things, but I also don't think that they're mutually exclusive. I don't think that we, we, you, you can't be serious and also have a sense of humor. You can't be serious and also love to joke around, or you can't joke around about thing about serious things in order to prove, or to make your serious point. You know what I mean? There's a lot of ways to, like we talked about satire and parody. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, a joking way to approach a serious subject and make a serious point. Um, and I think that comes down to the individual, but um, yeah, I think to live, to be sane, you have to be both, you know, you can't be, everything can't be a joke and everything can't be overbearing to where you, you know, just feel like the weight of the world's on you all day long, you know? Mm -hmm. When I, when I deconverted, um, there was like a few points where I was like, and that was within the past year where, man, 20 years, hmm. 20, where did 20 years of my life go? Right. You know, think about, you know, all the, I remember this one time I was staying on like a, you know, I lived on a lake and uh, like out in the countryside, there was this uh, cut down tree where it's just that stump right there by the lake you know all elevated and everything and uh you know your mind just draws you to dramatic moments and i remember standing there as a teenager on top of it and like just like screaming out to god right and, and trying to make sense of the universe and that sort of thing and then like here we are like 15 years later after an incident like that and i'm looking back i'm like what the hell was i doing <laughs> 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 like, and that was just one occurrence. Like right. think of all the things that you allow to seriously take over your life. And, and now, you know, when you deconvert or, or pull away from some of those ideas, especially as you get older and kind of develop psychologically a little bit more, if you do in fact progress that way. And, and you're just looking back on this, like, what the hell was I doing? Hmm. Well, what was I trying to get other people to do and why? Right. Like really, what's what was going on there? And oh. and, and, and and what took so long? <laughs> what took so long? Yeah, like a you know, I, I always I often wonder that. I mean, I mean, you know, full disclosure. I know the name of of the show here. I never had to deconvert because I was always an atheist. Uh, I was born and raised an atheist. I mean, I don't say I was raised. I wasn't raised anyway. I just was never given a religion. And um, my mom is vaguely religious, fuzzy Eastern religion, New Age, Santa Cruz hippie type stuff. Um, and my dad was a, you know, an atheist who didn't know that the word atheist just, you know, thought all religion was a scam yeah. and therefore never went to church, never saw church. Anyone who went to church was, was a, a crazy person. Even if they went once a year, I was like, Oh, you went to a church. Oh my God, what's wrong with you? Um, and so I never grew up with any of that. So to me, it's just, it's normal to be the, the way I am and think. And, and, um, so I always find, I talk to a lot of people, you know, and what I do, I talk to a lot of people that were formerly religious um, and, and their epiphanies are amazing to me because I go, wow, yeah. at some point they had this and it's coming from somebody who was never indoctrinated or never had that forced on me. I always go, well, how, how did you not see that? Yeah. How did it take you so long? Like when you were, when you were standing on that stump yelling at God, when you didn't get an answer.
So wouldn't that have been enough to be like, okay, done. No answer. Where's my answer, buddy? And yeah, then they yeah. go, no, I imagined the answers, you know? I, I, I thought I heard the answer or something. I mean, there's always some different story. And I just go, wow, it's it's such a different world than I've ever, you know, experienced. Right. Well, because in you're on the tree stump and you're yelling out across this, uh, you know, uh, lake and, you know, it's sun setting and it's all majestic and like you're feeling it. I mean, this is almost like being a cinema. Right. And then right. Like, you're like, uh, 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 God, uh. and then like <laughs> you're all quiet and then a breeze blows. and You're like, Oh, was that you God? <laughs> you know, and then your mind is okay with filling in the blanks because you're so like desperate right here right. for the blank yeah. to be filled in. And, mm-hmm. and almost anything at that point can become a meaningful supernatural response. So you just right. accept it. And, and, and anything acts as that type of validation and that will carry you on through the years. If in fact you think that that is the best approach at life, you know, right. or, or you can be raised around educated persons, you know, either way. <laughs> like it, I was, it, it's, I would say it's, it's funny because that's, it, it's not just, I mean, re- all religions, cults, gangs, um, you know, uh, anything, the military, the way it could be anything, any, when, when people are at a certain age and they're looking, I mean, and not, not, of course, the people that are indoctrinated at day one, but everybody's looking for something. Everybody wants answers. Everyone's trying to fill a hole. I feel like most people, we all have insecurities. Like I said, we all want to, we all want to be liked. We all want to be admired. We all want to be great at something. We all want to be the best at something. We all want everyone to look up to us. And, and, and we all want that. And we all have, have space to fill. And it's, it's really easy at the right time for the right thing, person, whatever, to fill that. Um, I mean, that's, like I said, that's how, that's how people get into gangs and cults and all sorts of stuff. It's like, you know, yeah. You don't. You're lost. You're looking for something. You have no no support group. You have no family. You have no um, whatever it is. And there's a gap there. And and if and at the right time, if the right thing takes fills that gap or offers to fill that gap, you're gonna be you're gonna be right on board with it because um, it feels right. And sometimes it takes a long time, if ever, to 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 realize. Oh, this that's why that that's why that filled that gap because I, I I need I need and still need something there. And it was the only thing, first and only thing that came around. Yeah. Um, Bud Askins over on the live feed right now um, said that comedians have a way of conveying the truth better than serious news sources. And that resonates with me. I can remember, you know, some of the issues that we've talked on right here and referencing past comedians and, and their bits. I mean, these are bringing, you know, if you're not an avid news watcher, you might be someone who watches comedians. And um, and then uh, Bud over on the live feed also says, I've been getting my news from Comedy Central for years. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I can resonate with that, even though I don't watch Comedy Central very much at all, but I totally get it. Ian, is part of the way that you deal with issues done through the topics you bring up in your comedy bits and how you engage with your audience? Yeah, I think I think most of it is. Um, okay. Or, or if, or at least if it isn't at the beginning, it is eventually. I mean, yeah. I, I eventually would get. A, I eventually will bring everything that I'm dealing with, or thinking about, or or confused about, or angry about. I'm always going to bring it on the stage. Um, yeah. And a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people say, "Oh, leave, leave politics and religion out of comedy. Just come up here and talk about your kid. Come up here and talk about, you know, poop or whatever that we find funny." And and I'm like, no, man, that's not, that's not how I operate. Not that I, not that you can't, you know, I mean, even Carlin used to say, I love a good fart joke, I love, you know, and all that stuff. You can talk about whatever, whatever you want, whatever gets you through the day, whatever makes you laugh um, as a comic. But for me, um, I, I have to do not only what makes me laugh, but what makes me angry. And then I have to find yeah. something funny in it. And, and I have to maybe make it, point out the ridiculousness so that other people get angry about it. Um, sometimes I want people getting angry because that's how you get change done um, right. is get people motivated and angry. And, 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 and sometimes you just have to make fun of stuff and make it ridiculous for people to, to laugh at it and then go, Hey, yeah, now I'm angry. I mean, it's funny the way he put it, but I'm angry that I, that I've now thought about this thing that's being perpetrated on me or whatever. Um, 
it, so yeah, for me, it's like, I, and also it's a good way to deal with stuff. I have to be able to, to look out at the crowd and see people nodding their head and saying yes and laughing and going, yeah, yeah, I, I'm on board with you. You know what I mean? That yeah. yes, I, there's, there's the community, you know, there's that, there's that approval. Okay. There's, there's my feedback of, of, oh yes, you are telling us something, you know, there's my, what I was saying earlier about everybody wants to be special somewhere. There's mine is I can say this and you, and I can make all these people agree with me or laugh with me and go, you know, and, and I get that instant feedback. That's why, that's yeah. why no comic comedian likes to bomb on stage. Cause it's like, you know, Oh shoot, no feedback. Nobody likes me. Um, right, right. And uh, yeah. So it's, you know, back to the earlier, the very first question too, that's what, why it's why sometimes Sunday is great to preach to the choir all the time and do all these conventions and do all this sort of, but sometimes I got to go do a comedy club in the, in the, in the, in Alabama and, yeah. <laughs> and, and know that maybe half the crowd's going to hate me. And, and can I, can I get them to see what I'm talking about? Can I get them to feel, feel what I'm talking about? Can I get them to get on board even, at least for a little bit? Can I not walk them? Can I not, can I keep them in the room even if they disagree with what I say? Um, it's, and it's, speaking of Alabama, do Christians secretly think that sacrilegious jokes are funny? Uh, oh, I, I think secretly and openly. I think I think it depends on how devout you are. And yeah. I also, I honestly, I'm going to be honest. I really think, and this is going to come off so self-serving, and it's going to come off as really arrogant, which I know they love to say that atheists are arrogant. Um, <laughs> it's an observation. It's not stemming from a place of arrogance. I promise you. Um. I find that a lot of times the people that get really upset by religious jokes or political jokes or whatever jokes there are the ones that have never actually thought about it hmm. They're And what you're, when you do that, you're pointing it out and they doubt themselves and hmm. they feel they call you arrogant and they get angry because they feel like you're saying you're an idiot. You're a moron for believing this. Um, and they know it's true. Or they, or they, or they feel, oh God, I've never actually thought about my own beliefs, and this guy just tweaked something in my brain, and now I'm angry at him for pointing it out because that feels arrogant to me. He just called me an idiot. No, no, no. You called yourself an idiot. You called yourself a moron. You, you're doubting yourself because of something I said, and you're yeah. turning it on. You know. But I find that a lot of times I get. I mean, I had somebody who's, who's a preacher, and I have had priests, and I've had people come out. That are like, yeah, I'm a, you know, usually like liberal people, but they're really they're guys that you know, old man that's been a preacher for fifty years and and kind of liberal dude and not super fire and brimstone and and comfortable in his own beliefs, even though we disagree. And I'll do jokes and like, oh man, that was great. I love what you did. I, I disagree a little bit, but man, that was really funny. Yeah, yeah, we we do do that. We got to be careful of that. Um, <laughs> it just happened to me, literally in Alabama. A friend brought. Um, brought her and I thought she was joking, but it turns out, no, she kept saying, Oh, I'm bringing my preacher with me. I'm bringing my preacher with me. Yeah. A friend of mine. And afterward he was crazy. He was crying the whole time. And after he was like, man, I guess it was really good. It was really funny. Um, but he's also, you know, again, he's not a crazy person. He hmm. just has a few different beliefs. You know, he's a more of a, maybe a, almost a deist. I don't know what exactly he does. Um, but he was super cool and he, he liked every, almost everything I did. I mean, he didn't, he didn't complain about anything. It was so funny. He goes, and you're right most of the time on this. Yeah, I, I believe there's a God. And I, but, but, yep, you know, those people are hypocrites. Those people do that. And, and it was cool. And I've had a, quite a few of those actually where I've had priests and preachers and, and whatever you call them uh, come to see me because they saw me online and they, they actually liked what I did. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay, so your analysis of how people respond to bits like that um, is completely 100% my experience. When I was like a fresh, like fervent, passionate teenager growing up into adulthood, thinking about these ideas, and I would hear comedians talk on these issues. Like, I know if I put myself outside myself for just a moment, like, shit they're saying is hilarious. Right. But like, but, but I check myself real quick. I'm like, oh shit, I'm talking about God. I'm talking about God. Like, Right. Talking about God like that, you know, like yeah. why don't you take God seriously? It, right, you know. But then, as I came out of it, and even especially now that I'm outside all of it, I see everything, every part about human culture that we've done to ourselves. Uh, like I get why the Joker is the Joker. I totally right. get why the Joker is the Joker. Like, like life is just so serious. Look at us with 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 everything that we've tried so hard to make so serious. 
like you throw a little bit of chaos in there, right? And then right. everybody freaks out. You know, how predictable is that? That's drawing attention to something like I'm gonna, like a little bit more like meta. Mm -hmm. That's that's maybe where a little bit more of our focus should be when we're deriving values about, you know, what should or should not exist in our everyday lives. And right. I think and agree with some people over in the live feed that that's just something comedians do best. So, Ian, thank you for what you do. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. And likewise, I mean, this is, um, I think there's a lot of people out there. Like I said, I, I, I tell, I talk to, you know, atheists and former religious people and people on the fence and people on the verge of coming out of it all the time. Hmm. And like I said, I, I never had to experience that. Um, so I've got that privilege in the sense that I, I, you know, that I thank my parents for not indoctrinating me. Um, and, but it's, uh, from what I find out, this is ne so needed for so many, there's so many people out there that, that don't know they can step away. They don't know that they, that they, yeah. that they can laugh at it. And then I know lots of people who, who, who are like, you know, I find out later, they say, oh man, I, I was a, I was a preacher. I was a, you know, head of my church for 30 years. And in the last 20, I didn't even believe it. <laughs> and I couldn't, I, you know, but it was my social construct. It was my culture. It exactly. was, you know, or, or the backlash. Like, I, you know, you know, and as soon as I got out, I got a divorce or, or my kids or, or my parents left. I mean, just crazy stuff. And, and it's like, man, yeah. they need to know there's a lot of people out there that think like them and they have to know that, that there's a support group for them. And they have to know that they're, that, that, that it's what they do is actually normal. And it probably mm -hmm. should be the norm. Uh, yeah. I know it's not the majority, but this is normal. And again, if, if, if you don't think it's normal, um, then look at any other belief, any other belief, like I said, like I said earlier, go look at Bigfoot. Do you believe that? No. And do you think people who believe that are insane? Probably. What about Islam? Do you think it, it, Muslims are insane? Probably. Do you think, you know, uh, Buddhists are insane? Maybe. I, do you believe, think that people who believe in, in Zeus and Odin are insane? Of course. So, uh, this is what we are doing is actually normal. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's not normal in the sense that it's not the majority, but it, it, this is rational. This is, yeah. this is real. We're dealing in reality here. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think a lot of people know that and they just, they just don't know how to admit it to themselves or how to get out of their community. Um, yeah. They haven't seen the open door yet. Yeah. And, and so what you, what you're doing with this, what you guys do, I mean, it's, it's super important for people to see this and go, you know, I mean, man, I've seen so many good, good podcasts and radio shows and music and comedy and all kinds of things that, that have, um, I was just saying on a panel this weekend that, um, when I was young, you know, I grew up in the eighties and the punk rock scene in Northern California. And I know so many people that are atheists now because of the band, bad religion. They're like, oh, the lyrics were so powerful and the music was so awesome. And I listened to it and I go, wow, these guys are really smart. And I'd start reading their lyrics and then I'd start reading other stuff about, oh, what is it? What is that word that he used? And then I'd read it and I'd end up in an anthropology book. And then I'd read about that. And, 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 um, that stuff is important. That's what helps people get through these things. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agreed. Um, Ian, where can people find you, my friend? Um, well, my, um, uh, Website is ianharriscomedian.com or skepticcomedian.com. They both go to the same place. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm on I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, just search my name, Ian Harris. Uh, it's my, my handle's comedioker or comedioker one, but that's just just look for me and you'll see the bald head. Um, <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah, and and um, YouTube and I've, uh, the one I'm on now it's uh, YouTube slash ap apocalypse comedy show. So, um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, come out and, and, and if you're in the, I'm touring a lot. Um, I've got an, an, a fairly recent special that's been out less than a year called extraordinary, uh, or extraordinary. Um, and that's on, that, Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's, uh, and then my old one critical am thinking is still out as well. Um, and I've got a podcast, Critical and Thinking, with Ty Barnett that we're doing uh, that we just started up, um, nice. like really recently, just started doing, and everyone's been telling me to do a podcast. So I got a lot of stuff out there. Sur search my name. I'd love to have you know um, anyone who's interested in this stuff. Check me out and tell me what you tell me what you think. And um, yeah, if you have Amazon and iTunes, watch my specials and comment. Tell me what you think. I hopefully people you get if you're 
like-minded, you'll uh, you'll get a lot out of them. I hope that's my goal. I think anybody on either side of the fence will get a lot out of your brand of comedy. I've seen some of it. I love it. Like I great, it, it's great. It gets you to thinking, and uh, and it's funny because this is real life, and this is the issues that we deal with, and um, and then hopefully it will press people in a the direction they need to go. Well, with that said, Thank Ian, you. thanks for having you. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. And if you're watching this right now as the audience, uh, go ahead and hit that like button if you appreciate conversations like these and if you want to support Ian or Fully Deconverted. And Ian, say goodbye to our audience. Goodbye, audience. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for joining.